In this video, you'll learn how to sign up for and use Google Voice. Google Voice is free for most people and allows you to make phone calls and send text messages. Voice is free for personal accounts. Personal accounts are any email address that ends with the at gmail.com. To create a free Google Voice account, you must have another mobile or landline phone number. First, let's see how to create your account. In this video, I'm using the Chrome browser, but you can use your favorite browser. To sign up for Google Voice, visit voice.google.com, then click on the For Personal Use button, and then select Web. Voice will ask for permissions to show notifications. This will show an alert when you receive a phone call or text message. I suggest clicking Allow, otherwise you could miss a phone call or message. Now we're going to reserve a Google Voice number. Search for a city near you, that way you'll have an area code from your region. Voice may suggest a town near you. In my case, I'm near the Green Bay area, so I'll pick Green Bay. After selecting the area, you'll see a list of available phone numbers. Click the Select button to choose your phone number. This will claim the number as your own. After confirming your phone number, Google Voice will link your new voice number with your existing phone number. Google Voice will send a text message to your mobile number. Enter your mobile number and click Send Code. If you're using a landline, click the Verify by Phone link. Enter the six number code and click verify. Now that your Google Voice account is set up, let's see how to use it. In the toolbar, click the audio settings icon. Voice may ask for permission to use your microphone. Click the allow button to give permissions to use your microphone. Under audio, you will see options for microphone, ringing, and speakers. The drop down shows the options available on your computer. Your options will look different from mine. Microphone is the device you speak into during your call. I have a Yeti microphone for my desktop. Your microphone will have a different name. A laptop may have a built-in microphone. Some headphones have an attached microphone. Uh, if you're a teacher, you may notice that your document camera has a built-in microphone. I suggest experimenting with the option to see which best works for you. Under ringing, you select where Google Voice will ring when a phone call is received. If you have headphones and a computer speaker, you may want to set the ringing to the speaker instead of your headphones. That way you can hear the ring when you're away from your desk. Also, hearing a ring in your headphones may be annoying. Speakers is where you hear the other person during your call. This can be different than the ringing setting. Next to your microphone, you'll see an oscillating symbol. This moves to show that your microphone is hearing noise. Say a few words to see that it's moving. If it's moving, then it's working. To test the ringing in the speaker device, you're going to use the test buttons. Click those buttons to test the auto devices. Use drop down to change where the ringing and where the speakers sound from. The main menu for Google Voice is along the left side of the screen. From here, you can find the primary features including phone calls, text messaging, and your voicemail. Click on the phone icon to make phone calls. On the right side, type the phone number you want to call or click the numbers with your mouse on the keypad. Then press enter or click the blue call button to place your call. The line will ring as it connects with the other line. Then you can complete your call on your computer using your microphone and speaker. You have options during your phone call. Use the text message button to send messages to the person you're calling. This button allows you to mute or unmute the caller. While the mute is on, you can hear the caller, but they can't hear you. This button places the other line on hold. You can't hear them and they can't hear you. This button shows and hides the keypad. This allows you to enter numbers, navigate phone menus, or dial extensions. While viewing the keypad, you can press the down arrow to hide the keypad. And of course, the red button ends the call. On the left column, you'll see your call history. This includes incoming, outgoing, and missed calls. Click on a phone number to see details such as date, time, and duration. From here, you can also place another call or send them a text message. Under the ellipses menu, you have more options. Uh, the people option lets you add them to a contact list. Enter a name or an optional label. The label indicates a type of number such as mobile or landline. After adding a contact, you can type the name instead of typing the phone number. If the caller is a nuisance, you can mark them as spam or block them. Marking the number as spam helps Google flag them as spam in the future for you and other users. Blocking a number prevents them from calling or texting you at all in the future. You just don't receive the call. Deleting removes the call from the screen and also deletes the history. Now let's look at Google Voice text messaging. From the main menu, select Messaging under the Calling options. Then select Send New Message. Under the To option, type the phone number you want to message. Or if the person is under your contacts, you can type the person's name. You will see any past messages from the person here in the middle. Near the bottom of the page, you can type a new message to the person. Press enter or click the send message button in the bottom right corner. Google voicemail is the third option in the main menu. 
you will see a welcome message left to you as you created your account. Click on the message to see the caller information. Google Voice tries to transcribe the voice or message into text. You can hear the message by clicking the play button at the bottom of the page. The ellipses menu for the voicemail has all the same options as the phone call and text messages, except that you can also download the voicemail as an audio file. Phone calls, text messages, and voicemail messages can be archived. This removes them from the main screen without deleting them. You can find archived messages in the archived folder. Now let's have a look at some Google voicemail settings. To view your settings, click on the gear icon. The linked number is the phone number you verified during setup. You can include additional linked numbers as well, but you must have at least one linked number with your Google Voice account. Your voice and text messages can be forwarded to your Gmail email address. Anonymous caller ID. Use this if you want to hide your phone number during outgoing calls. Call screening. By default, this feature is enabled. I recommend disabling this feature. It's super annoying for people trying to call you. It forces them to say their name before they can reach you. Do Not Disturb prevents Google from ringing and sends all calls to your voicemail. Your greeting is what people hear when they leave you a voicemail message. Click the record a greeting button to create a new outgoing message. Then click the green microphone button to record your message. Say your message into your microphone, then stop recording by clicking the red stop button. You can listen to your message and click redo if you want to re-record. Then click save when you're happy with it. Give the greeting a name. Some people create several greetings. For example, you may want a different greeting while you're on vacation or a special greeting during the holidays. A newly recorded greeting will become your active outgoing greeting. Use the manage greeting options to change your active greeting. Google voicemail to email. Enable the setting if you want to receive your voicemail messages as emails. That's everything you need to know to get started with Google Voice. If you have a question, leave it in the comments. Thanks for watching. Let me know if I can help.